Hey, stunning people. My name is Bean, and welcome to the Salt Lick Sessions. Our next artist is a one-take wonder. Both the videos you're about to hear are her first and only takes of each song. She is a light. She is a joy. I cannot wait for you to hear Ruby Amanfu. How are you doing? I'm doing so great. Yeah? Yeah, you how are you? You sound so great. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, my yeah. job's easy. Oh. I get to sit and talk to wonderful people like you. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Where are you from? I was born in Ghana, West Africa, mm. and my family moved to Nashville when I was just a month away from three years old. So wow. Nashville, but Ghana, right? <laughs> Deep in my roots. Right. And my roots, uh, you know, the branches have grown here, but right. yeah. What brought your parents to Nashville? 
So at the time, my dad was a computer programmer, mm-hmm. and um, you know there were headhunters back in back in Africa. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone thinks, oh, Africa is what we see on uh, on PBS and stuff back in the day, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, very robust uh, city, and so he had a headhunter. He wanted to um, move here. The eldest of four boys, his father passed when he was really young, mm. and somebody had to take care of the family. So um, it was between Nashville, Tennessee, Colorado, and Germany, mm. and Nashville won out. So we got on that plane. My baby brother was four months old. Um, I was almost three, and my sister was five. And wow. Somehow my mama did it, and my daddy did it, and here we are. Was Nashville warm to your family when they came? <laughs> no, Nashville yeah. was not warm. Mm-hmm. Nashville was not warm to our family. The good news, though, is we, believe it or not, we did have a sprinkling of, of friendships and family relationships. Um, some people that my parents had grown up with mm-hmm. um, in Ghana, a couple of families lived here. Mm. And um, so we were able to spend our weekends with that family and still having that support system, Hmm. um, which I think, right, you you kind of, that that term chosen family, Hmm. it's so true, you know, because you need that support system and we were really grateful to have had that here. Mm -hmm. Right. To get through those hard times. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. Are there any hard times in particular that you remember that stand out to you? Oh gosh, I mean, you asking me that, I can think about um, a very real moment where we were, Walking to the grocery store, we had a car. Mm-hmm. We just decided to take a walk. Not the legs. Uh, you oh, know, man. not the legs, you know, in <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee. And and we were walking, and I think my dad may have had my baby brother on his shoulders, and we were just blissful, having a great time. And somebody yells, you know, get a car, mm-hmm. you know. And, and being kids and just not really understanding, it's like walking, should not be this thing that you're judged, you know, you're judged for. Um, there are a lot of other instances like that. And even even as an older person, I'll not forget this, in my 20s, you know, I'd made enough money to get a high-rise apartment downtown and mm-hmm. was very proud of myself. And, uh, and a friend who lived in the building had said, let's go to dinner and I'll get my driver and get the limousine and we'll go to dinner. Some of the friends who were going to be coming with us, some, some of his friends who we didn't know, um, I had, uh, I was about to get into the limousine. They had gotten into the limousine. I can't believe I'm talking about a limousine and about <laughs> to say the words I'm going to say. Um, but they were in the limo and I was about to get in the limo. And then next thing I know, they're scooting out of the limousine. And then they, as they're walking by the door and I'm standing there, they say, we're not riding in this thing if a black person's riding in it. Wow. Nashville, Tennessee, you know? What? So, and I, I mean, I know that stuff is everywhere. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I have felt it everywhere. Um, but I think spending enough time in a place like this, it's, it's inevitable. Mm. Yeah. Did your parents, were they able to fortify you against that? Or was it kind of a family affair to assimilate into a culture that's kind of volatile? I think you hit the nail on the head when you said it was a family affair. Mm. Um, Assimilating was a really big thing. We were in it together. Mm -hmm. You know, um, obviously my parents took very seriously their leadership role Mm. in helping us figure these roads out. so we got a lot of courage from them. And we also learned um, that it is okay to to have feelings of uncertainty mm. um, and that to, going through adversity really does get you to the next plateau and it does make you stronger. Mm. So it was, you're going through this right now, you know, own it, deal with it, but know that what you just went through is only gonna make you stronger. Mm. Totally, yeah. totally. How do you yeah. think that adversity has played into your artist project now? Yeah, um, I definitely lean in to speaking about adversity. I lean into speaking about hardship, uh, but I also lean into owning the gift of strength. Mm-hmm. I think it's, I think it's something that more artists and songwriters, dare I say should be more open to. Hmm. Um, I have to say, you know, in my in my teens, a lot of my songs were just living in the hardship. 
right? Just mm-hmm. living in the woe is me. Mm-hmm. And there's a place for that because people need to be able to identify, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I feel that. But I think I, for me personally, it's a responsibility that I've taken on to talk about, well, what happens, you know, can you get through that, mm. that, that hard thing? Um, and I do find that there's a responsibility to talk about how to be strong, mm. you know? And, and for me, it's like, it's therapy for me too. My songs are often mantras for myself. And mm. my hope is that, you know, if I can get to a point where I can say it out loud, and practice that belief, I'm hoping that somebody else can, you know, clasp hands with me and start to believe that for themselves too. Mm. Yeah. You're confident, like you're just a very great person to be around. Oh man. Your ah, energy is infectious. Thank you. Yeah, you make me feel very just like calm and, and all a-okay. Mm, I appreciate that. I love that. Yeah. Well, you know, you have it too. You Do have I? that calming energy. <laughs> Maybe we're just chill yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, I'm into it. Yeah, we're the it. friends that get tea but not coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love <laughs> I'm into it. it. I take it. Yeah. How do you talk about <laughs> your story and where you come from but not let that be like the overarching defining characteristic of, mm. of your music? Wow, how do I talk about my story and where I come from and not let it be the overarching? Well, I think that being human, firstly, we all have a thread, truly, every single human being, no matter what our walks of, of life are. So I think at the, at the start and the end of the day, I'm human. Mm. And if I can find the connecting thing of all of us humans, right? Like, there's fear, there's joy, there's there's love, there's loneliness. Mm. Um, so with my art, I really try um, nowadays to talk about those things that we all have in common. Mm. I also like to tell other people's stories. You know, um, I'm a songwriter who doesn't just write about my own personal life. Mm-hmm. I fancy myself an empath, mm. which is a blessing and a curse. Yes, it is. <laughs> and you, yep, I knew you knew what I was talking about. Yeah. So to that end, sometimes getting to get it out of my body, I have I have to write a song about somebody else mm. because I'm already feeling it. I'm mm. feeling what somebody else is going through. So, yeah. I hear that. Mm-hmm. Empaths rise up. I'll give you a squeeze. Yay. Yeah. Thanks. We're all good. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. We can carry it. Yeah. We yes. Yeah. We can. <laughs> and then we can blah, purge it, and, yeah. you know, in healthy ways. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Can you turn me on to some music, maybe from Ghana, maybe people that you were exposed to in Nashville that I should know? Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, well, my, um, my uh, what do you call it? Uh, my likes are broad. Mm-hmm. Um the like songs list on Spotify. Well, I mean, my gosh, right? Like right now, I wish I had my phone, but but currently, the animals, mm. uh, Lady Smith, Black Mombaza. I've got um, right now. Actually, I've got this artist named Milk, M I L C K. We had her on. Oh, her I love, I love Connie Lim. I love her. Mm. Um, and then I've got uh, Rima. I've got. Um, Mahalia Jackson, pretty much always. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got Odessa Settles. Um, gosh, it's it's true. It's truly broad. I've got John Prine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm just honestly seeing the visual of what's on Spotify right now right. on my phone. <laughs> and out of those artists, who do yeah. you think would be in a playlist with you in like a similar space? Mm. Maybe share a bill. Yeah, maybe Milk. Milk. Yeah, you know. Um, when we met, it was in the midst of the pandemic, mm. and we are both, you know, children of immigrants. And again, there's a through line that we we're able to connect on, um, and we are also activists. We take activism really seriously, mm-hmm. um, you know, and and not even in a way that has to politicize everything. It's just, can we talk about, you know this hurt or this passion, can we feel our anger, own it, but then uncross our arms and figure out solutions. So, so I think milk for sure. I'm glad that you brought her up because you remind me of the energy I have when I interview her as well. Yeah. Yeah. She's my sis. It's funny. Um, I can't remember which election it was, but she was at the house and, uh, we had just written a song and she's so great at um, kind of 
PR and social media, and mm-hmm. and she encouraged us to do a little video. And instead of saying "row your boat," it was it was "row your vote," R O E, you know, <laughs> "row your vote." And so we did a little song, and we we posted it, and it, it was so fun. And and then one of my friends, you know, she said that you know her two year old was like constantly singing "row, row, row your vote," and we're like, yes. <laughs> My work is done. Yes. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. What do we have to look forward to you? Or, yeah. Let me say that one more time. Yeah. What do we have to look forward to from you? What, where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, my goodness. Well, I hope I see myself even closer to um, my truth. Hmm. I have not arrived. Hmm. I'm constantly learning and growing and changing. I finally embraced that change is necessary. Hmm. Um so I just hope to be more comfortable mm-hmm. in my skin. Um, I hope to also allow myself to start to to receive and be a receiver of good things and not just feeling like I'm giving, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think as as artists, we're so used to giving out and putting out, but the replenishing is something that we honestly have to learn. Mm-hmm. I almost gave this career up because I felt just the drain and the strain of that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll never forget, I was at a show and I, I had told myself this was my last show and I told, you know, um, I was in a duo at the time and I had told them, I said, this is my last show. I had signed up to become a, a, a a music teacher. um, And, and I was going to do this show and then be done. Before we went on, I was watching this artist named Michael Tolcher, and I was watching people watch him and watching people engage with him. And just seeing the give and take, it was the first time I had visualized, and it was almost like I could really see that there <laughs> there were electric currents being sent from the audience to him. Mm. He sent the electric currents, they sent it back. It was just this synergy, mm. and I started to cry. And, you know, I realized in that moment it is cyclical. We give, but we can also receive. We can also absorb that. And that changed things for me. So instead of me going to some random city and playing for people I didn't know and feeling like I'm leaving everything on the table, I find the people in the room who are looking at me like you're looking at me. And I allow them to feed me just as much as I'm feeding them. And I'll tell people before, you know, or in the middle of a show, I'll say, don't be afraid if I'm looking at you. It's because you're giving me energy. So thank you. So just more of that. Mm, I'm taking that with me. Yeah. That was good stuff. Good. So it it can be reductive, but sometimes I like to view people in my life. Are are you radiating energy or are Mm -hmm. you draining energy? That's good. It kind of can be a good way to to regulate. Yes. And you've been nothing but a radiator. Oh, Bean, thanks. Yeah, I just, I'm I'm really, really grateful to have gotten to meet you today. Yeah. You're even better in person than over Zoom. I'll give you another squeeze there too. Yeah, thank thank you you for your time today. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for this. Yeah. It means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You're amazing. You too. No shot without gun No beat without drum No crop without sun No two without one No growth without pain No progress Without change And no scorn Without shame No different Without same Whoever we are Whatever we see We take it all Set it all free And after the night 
the light appears there's no wind without fight no courage without fear No deep without wide, no truth without light, no hate without sight, no fall without rise, no song without voice, no After the night, the light appears. Cause there's no wind without fight. No, no courage without fear. Oh, whoever we are, whatever we see. There's no wind without fight, no courage without fear. There's no wind without fight, no courage without. Stunning people, if you want to get into the Salt Lick groove, head over to our channel page and get clicking. Tons of good stuff.